Um, it is the start of a new reading vlog. Hello, welcome. I am a little scattered because I have so much reading to do and I'm just a little bit stressed. I do have my new Mystic Falls sweatshirt on that I love. I got to go to the Mystic Falls uh, Vampire Diaries tour in Georgia when I was visiting Tori last weekend. So I got myself a sweatshirt, but I have a million and one books to read. October is the craziest release month I have ever seen. So I am doing a reading vlog, reading new releases. Now I'm actually, I have 5% left of this one and I meant to start this yesterday and I didn't. So I am gonna include this. This is Don't Forget Me Tomorrow by A.L. Jackson. Unfortunately, I'm not super, super loving it. I think it's gonna be a three star read. I was chatting with my patrons during our reading sprints and Victoria also didn't super love this. And I was like, I'm glad it's not me because I've seen everybody raving about it. It is a brother's best friend friend they have been in each other's lives since childhood and they actually were like on the cusp of becoming something more a few years ago and it's one of those situations where we don't know what went wrong until later but it's pretty pretty obvious what went wrong and not a lot's happening it's a very 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 slow book where she has to live with him for a certain reason with her son and they just like hang out <laughs> and I'm like, I need a little bit more plot. I loved book one. So I had really high expectations for this and I'm just not loving it. I'm so sad. I did get the, this edition from the author in a book box that I just actually opened for Instagram and look at those, those, uh, end pages. And then we do have some like page overlay art stuff in here. So sad I didn't love it, but I do have 5% left. I'm definitely going to finish that today. I do have an audio arc of hopeless by, uh, Elsie Silver, which is like for sure what I want to read in this vlog as well. I'm definitely going to read that. And I also have a few other things. I have Carla Sorensen's new book, which I definitely have to read. And I think I have another arc on my Kindle. Madison's arc, the good, good game. And so I have a bunch that I could read for this reading vlog. And I don't know what else is going to show up on my Kindle from what I have requested. So I am getting Ava Hunters, but that doesn't come out until the 26th. So I don't remember when I'm getting that. I do know that Carla Sorensen's is on K Read Listen. So I might listen to that one and listen to Elsie Silver's. And I don't know what else I want to pick up. So there are so many that have come out. There's a Christmas romance I really want to read that came out. There's just too much, but we'll see what I end up reading for this vlog. But I thought I'd take you along and read some new releases because it's been a while since I've done a new releases reading vlog. So we'll see. I've already read Shadows of You, which is Catherine Cow's new book. I read that last month and it was amazing. That comes out the 19th. I would love to read King of Greed, but I don't know when arcs are going out. So we'll see if I go into that. And yeah, lots of reading plans. We'll see what I end up reading. Darcy. We are in bed. It is Monday night. I had quite the weekend um, dealing with stuff. And so I like everything kind of turned on its head. So I did not get anything done this weekend that I wanted to. Um, I didn't vlog at all. I barely read at all. Um, so here we are. I didn't even finish my book club read along which is for the wolf song series by Chi clune so i'm still reading raven song which i was supposed to finish like saturday um i couldn't go to our live show but i have some exciting arcs so i want to continue this vlog just to distract myself so i am 25 percent into grimstone already by sophie lark i 
also started hopeless on my drive to Barnes & Noble today because I was feeling down. So I bought a book <laughs> and I bought Carrie Maniscalco's new one because it's so pretty and pink. So I had to buy that. But I started Grimstone yesterday. I got like 5% and I could not focus. I read 20% on the treadmill today, more like 15 and then read 5% while I was like blow drying my hair this morning. So it's short. I usually get through like 10% if it's an average book and I got through 15. So this book's very short. I don't know the plot, <laughs> honestly, of Grimstone. She's inherited a mansion that's like crumbling down from an uncle that passed away that she never talked to, but her parents are dead. So she is raising her brother. So she is like in her 20s and her brother is like early 20s, I think. And they're remodeling this house. I do think their goal is to flip the house. I don't know for sure, but um, she runs into this guy who owns the street and he has a mansion also in this like weird place and he makes her a deal that she can use his street. He had a deal with her uncle. She can use the street if she does him favors in like housework and he's a doctor and he's like the night doctor for the town because it's like a very small town and so that's where it's at. I don't know where the story is going we'll see but i'm reading that one and my hope is to get through most of it tonight i did start hopeless by elsie silver and it's good so far Bo is back home and he spends most of his time at a bar and our heroine is the bartender so i think there's like a 13 year age gap she's 22 he's 35 and they chat and that's all i did not read a ton because my barnes Noble wasn't too far away from me so i listened to that on the way there and back trying to focus on the audio. That's everything going on. I do hope to get through. King of Greed is actually gonna be my next read because I have an arc of that now. And I do wanna read Good Game by Madison Fox. And I think those are the ones I really wanna prioritize this week and get through for you. So we shall see if that happens. This lighting is doing me zero favors and I apologize for the bags under my eyes, so don't look, but. I'm 23% in. I'm reading with my new decal on my Kindle. Look how pretty. It's like the skin that I put on it. It's um, decal girl, I think. It's pink. So cute. But I've already washed my face and I'm in bed and I'm, I've had a really rough past few days. Let me just say that. So I apologize for, for the bags under my eyes. But um, I just realized that I forgot a part in this book where he like can't go out in the sun. So, and that's why he's like a night doctor. Also because the people in the town like live too far away from like the actual hospital go to. So, is this paranormal? Like, I, I haven't even looked at any of the marketing for this book. I have no idea what Sophie's posted about it. Is it actually, is it paranormal? Is he gonna be like a vampire or something? She like joked about it, but like, is he? I don't know what this book is about. I don't know. We'll see. Behold, such a hard puzzle. Oh my gosh, you can't really tell that well, but this is what it looks like. Finished today, all done, and I got my nails done. Hello, I think I'm in focus. I'm waiting at Darcy to come inside. Um, I listened to so much of Hopeless by Elsie Silver. I initially was like, I'm just gonna finish Grimstone tonight and get started on the King of Greed and like hopefully finish all of King of Greed. That's not happening. I sat down listening to my audiobook and I got into a groove with the puzzle where I was like, I need to finish this puzzle. So I got so far into Hopeless. I am on chapter 27. So I don't remember how long this is. Book funnel's weird about like showing you your, where you are. So I have four and a half hours left and I think it was like 12 hours long. So I'm way into this and I don't know how I feel. I feel like with the characters, they're not my favorite. Like I think I liked Reckless and Powerless more than this one. Which I don't know what that says because every book in the series I've given I think four and a half or five stars and this feels like a solid four right now, but I don't know. It's just like, I like them. She is 22 and like the town hates her and he wants to fake engage with her so that like they treat her better and like help her get out of town. And obviously they're falling in love and it's very like, they play around with each other and don't want to like push the boundaries. They want to go like all the way with each other because they don't think like it's going to like lead to anything. But that's it. I mean, they're living together right now because she has a horrible family and it's good. It just like definitely doesn't have the same like super playful banter the other ones had. Like Theo is just a hero like you can't beat. And Jasper also is a hero I love. That this one's not like standing up to those. So I don't know when I'm going to end up reading it. We'll see like they're obviously going to fall in love. I do really love seeing like all the Edens and how in love they are with each other. But 
that's how I feel so far. I'm gonna read probably Grimstone in bed and hopefully finish that and then start on King of Greed tomorrow. So those are the plans. I don't know if I'll finish Hopeless tomorrow. I hopefully will because it comes out on Friday. I just have Good Game left that I haven't finished. I haven't even started and that comes out tomorrow. So that's an arc I'm not gonna read on time which is just what it's gonna have to be. I'm hopefully maybe read that this weekend. I don't have any plans this weekend. So it's just gonna be a chill weekend, which is what I definitely need. So I would love to just like hang out. It's been really nice tonight. I did get my nails done. They're like a shiny green. I love them. Getting my nails done has just been like a really nice treat. And I look forward to it every time. I love my nail tech, so she's awesome. Um, and I love having my nails done. They literally last so long. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to take Darcy upstairs. Grimstone's also not feeling five stars for me. Like it's fine, but it's just like super centered around their physical connection. And I'm like, but where's the story going? Like people are scared of him. They think he killed his wife and she's trying to unravel that. But I have no idea, like something was like playing the piano in her house too. So I'm like, is this paranormal? Is it not? I don't know. And she's just like getting to know the people in the town and learning his reputation and, but also like falling for him. But it's very physical like they only like each other physically so i don't know i just like i'm in a weird reading funk where like nothing is like holding my attention i don't know like hopeless is fine i'm listening to it but i'm not like in love with the story grimstone is fine i'm just not in love with the story king of great i think i'm gonna love so that's why i really want to get to it and i've really heard such good things about good game so i really want to get into that but we will see Hi guys, it's been a while. It's been a couple days. Um, oh, this is warm. I have a mug heater on my desk, like a mug warmer. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. It's almost 10 and I'm like still, I just like sip on my tea throughout the day. I made this at like 8.15 and it's still nice and warm. It has three settings of maybe four. Oh, it's got three and they're so nice. I'm like at the very end of that. So it's 9.50 today. I do have Taylor on because we're gonna go to see her movie today. Me and my sister, I'm very excited. I've finished a lot. So yesterday was my goal was to read a lot. I did not work out yesterday. So all my reading happened in the afternoon slash during the day when I was doing, like if I ever do anything where I have to like copy and paste things across documents or like organizing documents or doing like anything with canva or something or like grabbing links i can listen to my audiobook if i'm like answering emails or something i can't so i was organizing a couple of like google sheets for an arc team i'm working on so i was listening to hopeless and i finished that and i'm giving it three and a half stars so i just didn't love it and i'm so sad i i it, okay, so I was talking about it with my patrons and reading sprints because a couple of them have read the arc too and I was having a lot of hard time like putting my feelings and so I was like looking at reviews whenever I read a book that I don't love and I'm like so torn up that I don't love it. I go to Goodreads and look at the reviews to see what other people are saying and there's definitely a lot of reviews that are five star reads but then there's a handful that are three and four star reviews for this book as the last in the chestnut spring series and they pinpointed how i was feeling so first definitely feels more of bailey's book than Bo's, which was kind of sad because Bo has been like on the periphery the entire time and i'm really intrigued by his character i thought it would take like a lot more of a darker traumatic turn because i'm thinking about like authors and someone in my comments and patreon was like so and so does that so well and like i could imagine this book be written by them and it didn't take that deep emotional toll that i thought it would and i wanted that from that book so Bo was a prisoner of war and he disappeared during jasper's book i loved him and jasper's relationship in this book and the really the only things that i truly loved about this book was the side characters there wasn't a whole lot of plot it literally was Bo and bailey fake dating and bailey trying to take control of her life get over her horrible family she has brothers and a dad who really take advantage of her and the town doesn't like her because of her family and so she feels stuck and so Bo is helping her and being really protective of her and also it just like made me feel a little weird it was she's 22 and she's a virgin and he's 35 
And so a lot of it was her ex inexperience. She wasn't necessarily innocent because she was definitely very open about wanting to learn about sex and like experience that with someone. And she had done like done stuff herself. So she's not like super, super naive, but like if it's a virgin heroin with that big of an age gap it just kind of feels a little weird to me so that was kind of hard to shake for me throughout the book too so i just i don't know i don't know if i was just wasn't in the mood for this kind of book when i read it i just didn't truly love the book as a whole because of the lack of plot i feel like this was the one that had the least amount of plot but also the least amount of emotion out of all of them because you get so much i mean like jasper's book was super emotional reckless was just like it's hard to top powerless and reckless because those are my two favorites of the series and then i know everybody loves heartless and flawless was so fun when i read it so the fact that i think every single book i've given in the series is five stars this one just is not on the same level as those to me so i gave it three and a half and probably i don't know if i'll round it up to four i don't know because even at the end i was like mm. Like, their drama was just her getting mad about certain things. And I just, like, it was nice, but that was it. So, take that as you will. Let me know if you've read it, what your thoughts are, because it comes out today, the day I'm filming this. And then I also read Grimstone. And this one is hard to put pinpoint my feelings on, too. I feel like this was just a fun time. And it's spooky. There's definite trigger warning. Someone was messaging me yesterday on Instagram about the lack of trigger warnings there's trigger war there's a lot of trigger warnings so there's also i mean there's a lot of kinks in here and there's also death of family like her parents died his wife died and there's death of a child that had happened in the past so definitely like know that before you read this book and pick it up it's definitely very atmospheric and spooky it gives spooky vibes i kind of wanted it to get a more paranormal aspect that it kind of hinted at like it could have been but it was very much very spicy and i found myself just like skimming through some of those by the end because there were a lot of spicy scenes and the there's like a big twist that I saw a lot of Goodreads reviews talking about and like it was fine it wasn't like life-altering mastermind kind of twist that some of the reviews were saying it was just like yeah cool like there's that cool twist okay so the experience was fun I was like it's a fun spooky book the atmosphere was really spooky weird things are happening in this mansion that she's trying to rebuild the hero has the secrets and the heroine doesn't know if she should trust him or not so it is what it is i'm probably gonna give it four stars i mean more on the three and a half to four it's just been hard for me to like be blown away by a book recently so it was fun it was fun but it wasn't like the next most amazing thing ever plus compared to all of her books that i've loved so much it was just it was fun so four stars yeah and then I did start okay I have so much stuff to do when I started King of Greed obsessed this is so angsty Alessandra it starts like what is her tipping point like what pushes her to leave him and he's devastated oh my gosh he's devastated and I need a man to grovel and he he is turning it on i don't know it's like a, it's she had said it's a very different grovel than alex and twisted love he is like realizing the error of his ways and we do get flashbacks too and i really like it we have like little scene flashbacks in the middle of the present day which i love and then we get like a chapter of a flashback so i think it's being woven in really well and i'm i'm loving it so far but only 20 percent in and then i did start good game as well and it's because i was on the treadmill and i didn't want to read king of greed while i was working out i just want to like really immerse myself in that so i read good game i started it and i'm 15 percent into that and that one's really fun too it is a really unique premise because like he's a really famous streamer and they go to this like streaming award show and the heroine is working there as a waitress and she's not really into like the streaming crowd but he is like a super super famous streamer but he's anonymous he's like a masked one so they meet things already get a little spicy at the award ceremony but it's fun i'm really enjoying it so far it really just like hooks you from the beginning so loving that and then i did end up starting the audiobook of uh, to ravish a rogue by sam Nascosta, and it's definitely very much gentle rogue vibes because she pretends to be a cabin boy on his ship and what's interesting is she actually was like 
hooking up with people in the beginning to try to get information. She's very sneaky and she is a shifter. I don't remember if they said what the hero is, but there's like pirate ship involved. She's like on his ship now acting as cabin boy, but he immediately sees her and knows she's not a cabin boy. So he's playing with her, which is exactly what happened in Gentle Rogue. He made her like sleep in his cabin and like wait on him hand and foot knowing he's she wasn't a cabin boy, that she really is a woman. So very fun so far. I'm gonna continue listening. It's a very short audiobook. So, so far I'm 20% in and we'll see if I listen to more today. So I'm gonna go continue working, busy, busy day lots of stuff to work on so then i have my taylor swift movie tonight and tomorrow i'm gonna read all day so tomorrow i'm hoping to end this vlog and finish these three books so that i have five total for this vlog we'll see if that happens but i will chat with you guys later Good morning. Um, I just want to let you know I'm going to be reading all day. It is my goal to finish this vlog today. I have three books I need to finish, but I am 20% into two and 50% into one. So I dropped my sister off at a car place because she was in an accident a couple weeks ago. Her car's finally fixed, so she went to pick that up and I just made my tea. My water just got done. It is raining. Darcy's on the couch. We're going to read. I have my folklore sweatshirt because I saw the Taylor concert in theaters yesterday, which was fun. And now it's time to just read all day. It's the perfect, the perfect day. It is raining like crazy. And I slept in, which was nice. I mean, I slept until eight, <laughs> which is sleeping in for me. But yeah, I'm just ready. I'm ready to read. Happy Saturday night. I'm so close to being done. So I finished King of Greed earlier today. I'm giving it four and a half stars, running up to five. It was so good. The groveling Dom has to do. I don't know if I've talked about the plot, but it is a marriage in trouble, marriage in crisis. In the beginning, we see like the last straw for Alessandra and her demanding a divorce we know from the papers that she wants a divorce because she's assigned the papers dom and so it's definitely emotional my friends cried in the beginning i talked to a couple of them but i didn't cry at all during this book but it was definitely very very angsty and like i love a desperate hero and dom was so desperate to win her back and i loved it he definitely groveled very different from the groveling in was in love but it was so good and i don't want to spoil anything the reason i got four and a half is because there was a subplot that i would have loved to be a little bit more fleshed out i wanted a little bit more to their like resolution if that makes sense i don't want to spoil anything about this book but i love a marriage in crisis and i wholly believed them and alessandra really made dom work for it i loved that about her she wasn't gonna let him like take it easy and she was very wary to give anything a second shot because of how much he had hurt her and it was just so good so good and i flew through that book like i could not put it down i was so invested in their characters and how they were gonna make it work and i loved the side characters in there and we definitely get like a little little sneak peek of the next book so very good um, so four and a half to five, but rounding up to five because it was just, I love that trope and I need more marriage and trouble romances, marriage and crisis romances. And I really liked the conflict. I feel like a lot of times they have the same conflict when it is a marriage and trouble romance. And this one I felt was different. So I really love that. I'm also 70% now into a good game. I've been reading a lot. So I read all morning, finished my book, King of Greed at like 1.45. Hi, Libby. And then I did a podcast episode with Tori and chatted with her. And then, so my sister ordered Chinese. She had Postmates. We never order out unless we have like a coupon with the app because we literally would rather drive than pay the extra money to pay for it to be delivered. So, and we live pretty close to like a lot of different food options. So it would only take like an extra 20 minutes out of our day to like go get the food and bring it back. And I always put an audio book on. We wanted to try a new Chinese place because I really was craving Chinese food. And so she ordered it and then... 
it said it had been delivered and they left a picture and everything and I looked at it I was like that doesn't look like our garage door so I went out and they put it in the driveway of the house they delivered it to so we looked and it wasn't in our driveway and I was like what the heck and so I was looking for the combination it was like a black concrete driveway with a white garage door and there's only a couple houses on our street that have that combination and it wasn't even on our street. Like my sister literally got in her car and drove down our street to see if she could find it. It's nowhere to be found. They delivered it and they took a photo of it to the wrong house. And Postmates doesn't have a way to contact the driver. Cause I was texting Tori. I was like, literally why I never order it. Like they delivered it to the wrong house and I wanted my Chinese food. And so we had to like ask for a refund and say it was just never delivered. They're like, are you sure? Here's the picture. I'm like, yep, but that's not my driveway. So that was really frustrating. And so we ended up ordering then a place right by us that we have a lot. So we placed the order and then I went out and drove out and got it and brought it back because I wanted more Chinese food. So we had Chinese food. We did finish an episode of British Baking Show and that was really good. And then I had read more of good games so I'm 70% in now I'm gonna finish tonight this has gotten so good so in the beginning I I'm not like super in the mood I'm a weird reading mood I'm not super in the mood for contemporary but I don't know what I want so after this vlog I'm gonna do a fall reading vlog where I only read paranormal and fantasy and like hope that fixes my problem so they pretty much like fell pretty hard for each other in the beginning and I wanted more drama and angst and that's what I'm getting now which I really love but in the beginning it was like they went to an award show and then they went to a party and they went to a club and then there's another party and I'm just like I don't love love romances that focus on that so it's definitely a me problem where I was just like not super engaged in the story because all of the plot was things that I don't really care about in a plot where it's parties and hanging out and hanging out and parties like that's what the plot is but he is a gamer and falling for her as his true self. So he's like an anonymous gamer, a mass gamer. No one knows who he is. And he runs into her though and they start kind of dating as Alex. And so she doesn't know who he is. And so he's also sometimes running into her as Blade. And she's like super attracted to both. But it's like the same person. And I love that dynamic. So like now I'm starting to really, really love the plot and where it's heading because that whole situation is kind of coming to a head and I really love his roommates who are also mass streamers so I'm hoping that they get books too because I really love that and I just really like the whole concept of the mass streaming thing happening so yeah I'm gonna continue reading this might be like a four and a half star read we will see how the end goes okay so I I changed <laughs> into my PJs, but I finished Good Game, and it is 9.40. I was just texting Tori because she did literally just finished too, so we were just chatting about it, and I think that Madison's writing is so good for a debut book. Like, I am blown away by her writing because I've definitely read books where I'm like, this definitely feels like a debut novel, and I wouldn't say that for her book. Love the setting. I feel like I want to give it, I don't know, I... For sure, at least four stars. I think I'm gonna do four and a half, and I just don't know if I wanna round down or round up because I feel like I need to give her points for uniqueness and ingenuity in her writing because it's so easy for people to just follow trends and try to chase trends. And I love that she wrote a game of romance. It was definitely a lot spicier, and they definitely connected on their physical attraction first to one another, which I always, when I don't know what I wanna read a book, I'll go on Goodreads and read the reviews. And so some of them are like, wow, they like instantly jumped into lust. Like they were hooking up at the award ceremony that she was working at when they first met. But I thought it was a fun way to start their relationship. I do think that it needed a little bit more plot wise than just like going to a party or to a club and stuff like that which is really what happened didn't super super love the reveal at the end but i really liked how that was resolved so there were definitely a lot more pluses and minuses and i loved just that it was a gamer romance that was really fun and that he was a streamer and that he was super rich and like she was wealthy too i would have loved to see a little bit more about her art and like her family and stuff like that but i did love the found family aspect of his friends and i'm so excited for the next book because parker is such a fun hero and he gets the next book and then i would i'm so excited for jackson's book too i really loved his two friends that he streamed with so Definitely four and a half stars. I read this almost entirely in one day. I read 80% in a day after reading 60% of King of Greed. So I read a lot today, but I just like had a lot of fun. And I think that if I wasn't in my like weird, slumpy, tired of contemporary phase, I wouldn't have minded the plot of the book with the scenes that 
we had so i'm very impressed i had a really fun time i would definitely recommend checking it out and i'm super excited for madison and i will say i am friends with her so like take that as you will but i had a lot of fun and i would definitely recommend reading it and i don't know anything about gaming <laughs> so i was able to still like fully understand everything i think she did a really good job of having a lot of gaming in there but also not making it hard to follow along if you aren't familiar with it so really enjoyed it and i think i'm gonna finish my audio i was gonna end the vlog here but i do really want to finish the audio so i have my final book for you guys i have two hours left of the audio so i know for sure i'm gonna work out and walk my dogs tomorrow so tomorrow morning i will finish that audio so i will talk to you one more time about my thoughts of to ravish a rogue which is actually really fun he is a monster she's also a shifter so like he shifts and things get a little uh, i mean this book is pretty much pure spice at this point it's definitely definitely a fun time like that's really all the plot is in this one she's just like hanging out on his ship he does know who she is so it's very much him like playing around like knowing who she is and like testing her because she's like disguised as a cabin boy kind of thing i will chat with you one more time tomorrow good morning everybody um it is currently sunday morning and i have finished my book for you so i did end up finishing the to ravish a rogue and it was definitely very spicy and it was a little it's i have a little bit of a hard time adjusting to spice and monster romances because of the monster aspects like she had teeth somewhere <laughs> that he liked and then her like monster powers had to do with that and i was like i really do not know how i feel about this but it was still a fun time. I enjoyed their chemistry and the story and her journey wanting to get where she needed to go. So I did give this one four stars. I just thought it was fun. But like it's not, I don't know. It's, I, I rate things differently based on like how seriously I take them. And this one's just like a fun time. So I feel like it's not at the same level of a four star as like a book that I genuinely enjoyed. Like other ones I've read in this video. But you take it for what it is. It's a monster romance. It's historical. They're on a pirate ship. It was a lot of fun. So it was four stars for this one. And that is all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you picked these up and what your thoughts were of these new releases and what other new releases you think I need to pick up. I would love to hear. And that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.